Hello my little ones, I hope you guys are having a great day today. Today is January 5th, 2021. So guys, so the book we're going to start with today is What Are Rights and Responsibilities? What we have, what we can do, what do we can. Okay. What are rights and responsibility? responsibilities a right is something that everyone should be able to do in the United States we have some very important rights we can choose our own religion and defend ourselves if we are charged with a crime we can speak out against the government if we disagree with it in some countries people cannot do these things without getting in trouble because we have these rights we also have important responsibilities. A responsibility is something that a person must do. When everyone acts as a responsible citizen, we can all enjoy our rights. Some things are both right and a responsibility. In the United States, children have the right to an education. Doing schoolwork is the child's responsibility though like we're in school now um, we're going to talk about where this came from what is the bill of rights the u.s constitution is a structure of how our government works it was written on the american revolution after the after it was written after the American Revolution when the United States was a new country, the men who wrote it wanted all thirteen states to sign and agree to the Constitution. The leaders in some states saw a problem though. Hmm. They thought the Constitution gave the government a lot of power, but not promised people enough of rights. Hmm. This dude, his name is James Madison, was one of the main authors of the U.S. Constitution. He also saw the person who introduced the Bill of Rights. <clears throat> the Bill of Rights was created to fix this problem. It is the list of ten amendments of changes to the Constitution. These amendments promise people certain rights that cannot be taken away. U.S. Constitution had 27 amendments made to it since it was written. <clears throat> Many of the rights that we value most in the United States are in the First Amendment. This amendment says that the government cannot force people to belong in certain, to a certain religion. The amendment gives people the right to speak out against the things they do not agree with. This is call, often called freedom of speech. The right to free speech applies to the press, such as newspapers, magazines, and internet stories sites, too. Newspapers have the right to print news without the government telling them what they may publish. This is called freedom of the press. The First Amendment also gives people the right to meet together peacefully in groups. People have used this right to publicly protest laws that they think are unfair. does the law protect us the law means um it helps us mm, like yep let me just now everyone who is accused or charged with a crime is guilty the 4th through 8th Amendment say how people should be treated when accused of crimes and tries to make the process as, as fair as possible. 
These amendments say that the police cannot come into your house without permission. They give people the right to a jury trial, a lawyer, and many other protections. The law who the people who wrote the Constitution knew what they they could not think of everything. The Ninth Amendment says that just because a right is not listed, this means does not mean people have a right to do not have it. The Fourth Amendment says that police have must have permission to enter a person's house and to search the property. This permission is called a warrant. What are civil rights? Citizens are people born in the country and with a right to live there. The Fourteenth Amendment says that all U.S. citizens are equal under the law. However, many years women, African Americans, and other were denied some of their civil rights. Until the 1950s laws that African Americans could not go to the same school as white people, like complected people. Some laws even said that African Americans could not sit next to the white people on city buses, like complected people. The struggle to make sure that all citizens were treated equally is often called the Civil Rights Movement. So this one says, Rosa Parks centered protest unfair laws that separate African Americans and whites on city bus in Montgomery, Alabama. This was part of the Civil Rights Movement. Okay. So, <clears throat> hold on. Martin Luther King was one of the leaders of the Civil Rights Movement. So this one, talk about this picture. This lady, his name is Rosa Parks. And what she did is, <clears throat> she, back then, everything had to be separate. So the light-complected people had to sit in a different section than the, the dark complected people, okay? <clears throat> and what happened is she didn't, she told the bus driver, the bus driver who seen that it was, the bus was getting too packed. And so the bus driver said, okay, I need people to move. And he told her and another man to move. But she didn't move she told him no and he was like you know you're gonna get arrested and she was like okay go ahead and arrest me she said no because she was tired of giving up she didn't see like she didn't see what everyone seen else that of the color of their skin everyone should have been equal so with that um they arrested her. They didn't like what she was doing. They didn't like that. They said, no, you're supposed to get up and move. And so <clears throat> what had happened also was she didn't give her permission, so she ended up going to jail. But everyone went and did this. Did this and protested and said, Hey, let her out. She's a good person. Let her out. And so they ended up letting her out. But same with him. A lot of people came to see Martin Luther King. Okay? And so this picture up here on top, these women. You couldn't, they said, like, you couldn't vote back then if you're a woman. They were, they were walking in nice, nice parts. Hold on, stop, pause. So they ended up taking her, and that's how she looked. Okay. So this book we're going to read is called The Youngest Marcher. Okay. It says, by Cynthia Levinson, illustrated by Vanessa Brantley Newton. 
The story of Audrey Faye Hendricks, a young civil rights activist. So it's being, she's she's standing up for what what's going on. Okay, there we go. Whenever Mike flew into town, Audrey and her mama cooked barbecue ribs, stewed greens, sweet potatoes, scoffle, and Audrey's favorite hot rolls baptized in in butter. That's how she looked. Her and her mama cooking. All right. Other folks knew Mike as Martin or Dr. King. Hmm. This is her her view through what she has made this happen in true story. Let's see. The Hendrix used his name nickname. They did the same with other ministers too, like Fred Shud. Shuttlesworth and Jim Beal. After Mike blessed the feast, Mama accept, expected Audrey to keep uh, keep still during supper. But when grown-ups talked about wiping the segregation laws that kept black and white people apart in Birmingham, she just had to speak up. Audrey intended to go places and do things like anybody else. I want to eat my ice cream instead inside Newberries. I want to sit downstairs at the Alabama. I don't want hand-me-downs to school books, but stools at the counter, plush movie theater seats, books so fat, fresh that crackle when you open them. Those were for white children. Hush, his mama. Nine-year-olds should not speak in front of company, especially ministers like Mike, Fred, and Jim, who were bringing dreams of justice. Okay. It's all out the thinking. Mmm. Looks good. Audrey knew all about segregation. She knew to pay the driver at the front of the bus, then step off and walk around the back door. Drink from the fountain with the dirty bowl and warm water. Use the freight elevator at the, the department stores downtown. Front row seats, cool water elevators with white gloved operators. La said those were for white folks. Every day, every Monday, Audrey and her mama and daddy and her aunts, uncles and cousins joined neighbors and friends of French Church for worship, fellowship, and testimony. She sang and swayed with the movement choir, her voice spirited and spiritual. Black and white together we should overcome, for once she didn't have to keep still. Then came testimonies. White store owners won't hire me. Ku Klux chased me. These were some these people. These people didn't like um, they didn't like African Americans. They didn't like um Jews, and they didn't like immigration people. So if you were not um white. You, if you were white, you, um, they, they come after you, basically. They're mean people. Police called me names. The hateful stories made Andre squirm. She tried to tell her mama that's not right. Shh. How can mama expect me to hush? She had to make things right, but what could she do? When Mike visited Fred's church, thousands of people crowded around to hear him preach. 
and a voice as tall as steel cables, as smooth as glass, he intoned. Segregation is morally wrong and sinful. That's true, fired up, Audrey sat taller. An unjust law is no law at all, he proclaimed. Audrey had listened to Mike explain his plan at supper table and knew what he meant. If a law is unjust, disobey it. Sit down inside Newberry's, pick at those white stores. March to protest those law un unfair laws. Why even marching was against the law? Then get arrested? Fill the jails, Mike exclaimed. Fill Birmingham with jails, so full that police cannot squeeze one more person in. Pack so tight that police have to quit arresting people for demanding their rights. Audrey just knew Mike's plan would work. She twisted in her pew to see which grown-ups would volunteer for jail, but they mostly stayed put. Eyes staring at their feet, hands and knees. Feet, hands and knees didn't move. Fill the jails, Mike pleaded, meeting, meeting after meeting, but heads shook all around her. Audrey heard, no, best not break for segregation laws. Boss man will fire me. Landlord will evict me. Police will beat me. If nobody protested, Mike's plan would fail. P police could keep arresting anyone, anytime, for anything, forever. Audrey would never be able to go to places and do the things like everybody else. One night, Jim Morrow announced a new idea. If grown-ups won't do it, fill the jails with children. Audrey lifted her feet. I want to go to jail, she uh, declared. Mama looked deep and saw that Audrey's eyes begged, please. Okay, Mama said. Audrey strutted down the strutted down the aisle. She was going to jail. So the kids are stepping up now because the kids want their freedom. They they want their rights. They want to go do things. So they're gonna step up. Let's see. Two mornings later, she put on a fresh pair. A fresh press pin for and shiny Mary Jane was turned down socks. Protesters got to look nice in the meantime. Her daddy brought her to a game to help her pass the time in jail. Her mom and daddy took her by Center Street Elementary to tell her teacher she'd be absent, maybe for a whole week. Miss Wills wrapped her arms around her. Audrey knew she was proud of her. She said goodbye to her grandparents. You'll be fine, her grandmother said. She'll know Audrey would be brave. So did Audrey. Then her mom and daddy drove her to the 16th Street Baptist Church where the children were gathering. Even before she reached the door, Audrey heard a loud voice chanting freedom songs. She stood her head up. Okay. Wow. She's very brave to do this. They are. Children are very brave. Inside, hundreds of big kids called out to friends and crowded around signs for their high schools. Parker Carver, her head swiveled. There was a sign of Century, Center Street Elementary. Where was the sign for Century Street Elementary? She was the only protester from her school, the youngest child in the whole church, and she knew no one. Audrey huddled by her parents in the basement. But when Jim lined her up, with the others, two by two, 
and the door swung open. Audrey straightened up. She was going to break the law and go to jail to help make things right. Clutching a protest sign in one hand and her game in the other, Audrey marched out the door. She stomped and sang, Ain't no, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Can a man love God and hate his brother? There's a lot of signs. Segregation is a sin. They're saying. Half a block from the church, a white policeman stopped Audrey. He pointed towards the police van. Sentence, one week in juvenile hall. Let me show you. A, a matron locked Audrey into a matron locked Audrey into a day room with two dozen other girls, all older, all bigger, all strangers. Audrey sat down alone and slipped the cover off her game. I told you to sit down, the matron yelled. Audrey jumped up. She didn't remember standing up. The matron dragged her to a dark, empty room. When I tell you something, you do it, she commanded, or I'll leave you here. She's brave. Trembling, Audrey quietly followed the matron back to the day room, put away her game, lay her head down, and cried. Jail was harder than she thought. She wasn't fine after all. By evening, Audrey was hungry and tired for dinner. Soupy, oily, tasteless grits and night. A bare mattress with one thin sheet for a cover. The next money, morning, uh-oh, no fresh underwear, no clean pin for, no toothbrush. That's a hard time. Audrey and her cellmates were let outside, outdoors into a cut, uh, empty concrete pen surrounded by high prison walls. The older girls talked together. Audrey wondered what her classmates were doing. Miss Wills would be keeping them busy. Audrey's the youngest one. When, on another day, Audrey was sent to a huge room and told to sit in a chair that was so high her feet dangled above the floor. Four white men glared at her. She never talked to a white man before. Are you against America, one demanded to know? No, sir, she answered politely. What do you talk about at those meetings? Another asked. Our freedom. Why did you march? To go places to do things like everybody else. What was wrong with that? Every mealtime, Audrey stared at greasy grits. She could barely spoon them into her mouth. She let alone, let alone swallow them. Every night, the cot's wires screamed and jabbed. Every morning, she had nothing to do but sit alone with her name. She was very sad in there. She was alone. She was the only one there. Only young one.
In afternoons, though, more kids crowded into the day room. Some days, many of them arrived sopping wet. A girl explained that firemen aimed fire hose at the children. Surging water spun them off their feet and down the street. They got up and kept marching anyway until they were sent to jail. More and more kids. See? By Audrey's fifth day in detention, the police couldn't squeeze in one more person. We filled up the rooms! We filled up the rooms! Audrey practically jumped up and down. She was so proud. Watching television in the day room, she saw black people strolling straight into stores and restaurants like they belonged there. No one else could be sent to jail. Everything had changed. Just like they were saying. So the children are making a difference. After seven days, Audrey went home. Her mom and daddy wrapped their arms tight around her, washed the gel off of her, and for dinner, Hot rolls baptized in butter. She was happy to be back with her parents. Mmm. That hot rolls uh, baptized in butter looks delicious. Mmm. Two months later, the city of Birmingham will wipe segregation laws clean off the books. Audrey licked her spoon clean at New Bears Counter like everybody else. Mmm. Black and white children, black and white together like we belong. The what it took a it took a while for the uh white people to actually Start getting along for with the black people, African Americans. Okay. Okay. This is the author's note. I'm gonna read it. No. It says author's note. Every day, Audrey Faye and Hendrick spent in jail. Her mother Lola called someone. She knew here there to make sure her daughter was safe. The day after her release, Audrey returned to Miss Will's class. She didn't tell her classmates about marching or, or jail, though. It didn't dawn on me that it was a big deal, she said. But it was. Audrey was one of the more than 3,000 children who was arrested in Birmingham, Alabama in May 1963. The Children's March was planned by Reverend James Bell, Reverend Fred Shelsworth and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. affected only, not only Birmingham but America. That summer, young people had protests in near nearly 200 cities. President John F. Kennedy spoke on television about prejudice and sent a civil li civil rights bill to Congress. On August 28th, about 250,000 people marched in Washington, D.C. to hear Dr. King preach about his dreams of freedom. I had the honor of talking uh, with Audrey in her home. When where she grew up, she showed me the table which Dr. King blessed the mills and the upright piano where she practiced civil, civil rights songs, including Ain't nobody gonna let nobody turn me around. Audrey told me that she remained an activist afterward. She volunteered to, to integrate a high school earning as one of enrolling as one of the first black students. It took a while for whites and blacks to work together, she said, but it was what we fought for. 
After graduating from college and working in Dallas, Audrey returned to Birmingham where she taught preschool, led Head Start programs. Years later, she earned a graduate degree researching women like her mother and herself, who were involved in the civil rights movement. Schools around the country invited her to speak about the about her experience as the youngest known marcher, nicknamed the rights civil rights queen. Audrey Faye Hendricks died in two thousand nine. What a difference the children's march has made in this nation. Audrey Faye Hendricks, January twelfth, two thousand eight. This was before she died. And. Here, ah, you can't see it. It's the hobbles baptized in butter. Looks delicious. All right, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in and listening to our story today. That was a very interesting story. And... That was a very brave young lady and all the other people who 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 helped her. That was very brave of them. And so I give them respect for that. All right, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. See you guys. Bye.